Hello friends, it's Lisa and I'm back today with another flip page from my Get Organized Challenge Week 3 Reward flip page. So this is the Week 3 Rewards. Next week, if I do all my stuff, I'm going to get my reward of a guilt-free craft day. Here I'm showing you the Cricut Design Space. You can see on the right all of the pages I've finished. We've actually done two of them before, but now we're working on the guilt-free craft day. So what I wanted this to look like is a day in your planner. So you can see the Saturday, which is a play on Saturday, but exciting Saturday. And then in the background, I showed you, but I was talking about something else, the outline of that pretty flower image. The What I did is I took a cut file, I got the very largest image that had all the detail, and I turned it into a draw file, and then attached it to the flip page cut file. Now, the Saturday is supposed to be the title for the planner page, planner thing. And then the L-shaped flower image kind of adds that square look to it. Now, I wanted the banners to say guilt-free craft day. I ended up putting guilt-free underneath of craft day. Didn't really think about it when I was doing it. I thought it just looked better. But and I wanted craft day to be big. So I did that maybe on my next one because week seven is another guilt-free craft day. I haven't gotten to actually making that one yet. I will actually put that on top. I'm trying here to see if maybe it'd look better with two of these draw files, but I decide the one looks better. You'll see in a minute that the colors aren't as cohesive as I would like. So really, if you're doing any kind of project, really think through what colors you want to use. Next, I'm going to add three photos to indicate that this is for week three photos. I do that by moving the typed font that I'd already made down and I'm picking a font that's going to look good drawn out because I don't want it cut out, I just want it drawn on. So I'll pick one and then I'll go in and make sure that that cut becomes right. Then I'm going to put it in the right place and attach it to the cut file of the flip page so that I make sure it draws it out in the correct place. And that's what I did with all of the other cut files, or draw and cut files. So the Saturday, guilt-free, and the background. You'll see I make the guilt-free all the same font as photos and Saturday, just to keep it consistent. I went through and cut out everything. You can see I designed and cut out everything all at once. I cut it out of Nina. Oh, uh, what's what's the Nina cardstock that everybody uses? Whatever that is, the 80 pound version of that. Solar Crest White. And but only after I had put it through my Xyron adhesive sticker maker machine which puts a layer of adhesive along the back. Then I just cut everything out, making sure I had it aligned properly. Since I had the adhesive face down, it worked out perfectly. I just cut it and I cut everything without mirroring it. If I had put the adhesive on top, I would have need to mirror the cut to make sure that it said craft day rather than something weird. <laughs> Now I've decided to create kind of an embellishment with this craft day banner and I'm putting some ranger gold 
embossing powder on here. I do this four or five times where I heat up the powder, put some more powder on, heat up powder, put some more on. This just allows to get a very deep, thick, juicy kind of feel to this piece of paper. Now, I decided that it was a little bit uneven, so I thought if I heated it up, it would remelt everything and make it all smooth. I'm not sure it did that. I became even more matte than I had expected. So just something to think about. You can see at the very end of this video a close-up picture of the craft day embellishment. And you'll see it's a little bit different than I expected. So always try out your materials before you use them on an important project. So here I'm using... B52 and B06 to color in the design on the back of this paper. Since it is just an ancillary design, it's not it's not the focal point of the flip page. I really wanted it to fade into the background and just kind of help with the feel I was going for. So instead of focusing on creating perfect blending, perfect coloring, I just flicked the color on. This is a great way to take something from being a focal image and making it more of a background image. So if it is going to be something really important and you're going to look at forever, you can go through and color it perfectly. I just wasn't worried about that for this. And you'll see in the photo, you can't even, you're not even noticing that I didn't color it perfectly. Instead, it becomes a design element. If I had just overstroked once, it would look like a mistake, but because that's how I continually did it, it looks like it's supposed to be that way. Next, I'm using R13. RV13 and RV04 to color this Saturday banner. I feel like this was a mistake. I should have used a different color. I think something more toned down to go with the blues, the greens, and the gold, which just have a more soft feel. The R, these bright RV markers are just a very in your face color while the rest of the card or the rest of the flip page is very toned down. You can see here I'm using the YG11 and G03 marker to color in the same manner the greenery on this flower. So to be honest with you I'm not sure this is my favorite page. Actually it's probably my least favorite page I've made so far. I'm making it again tonight, so we'll see. Hopefully I like it a little bit better. I think I made two mistakes on this. The first was the yellow, or <laughs> first was the pink we just talked about, and the second was the purple that I haven't put on, but I'll show you in just a minute. They just didn't work. It kind of, they took away from the page rather than adding to it. But I'm just trying to have fun here and be reminded that I'm going to have an awesome craft day, that I can do whatever I want if I do all my homework for photos, which I'm not sure what that's going to be. I have not watched the Get Organized Challenge video that happened today. I need to go back and do that. I have a full-time job that I work, so Sadly, I don't have all the time in the world to craft and watch crafting videos, if only, right? But I'll watch it tonight. Here is where I'm using that shaded lilac to add the corner blending detail. It's a very soft look, but it takes it from being graphic to being a little homey, er, homemade-y, rather than the graphic intense I was going for. So it's just one of those things you live and you learn. Next, oh, you can see there in the corner I'm adding a little 
swatch to my swatch card. I don't know if I'm going to keep this one just because I didn't really love the colors together. I think I should have taken a little bit more time and picked colors that worked better together, especially the RV colors because the blues, the greens, the gold, and even the shaded lilac went pretty well together. They're on the same tonal value. These pinks just, against the more muted tones, look almost neon. So, you live and you learn. But, moving on. We're going to go ahead and fill in the insides of each of these drawn words. It doesn't have to be perfect, and it's going to look more like I wrote this in, which is cool because my font is nowhere near as cool as this. But it adds a thickness to the words that then you can read it well. So I do this for the Saturday Yay, three photos, as well as guilt-free. But I'm going to speed this up real quick so we don't have to watch me doing it. It's, it does take a little bit of time, but it, it takes this from interesting to, oh, I get it. <laughs> you know? You're not having to look quite as close. I think for the guilt-free, what I could have done is taken a gold metallic marker and colored it in, and it would have looked, it would have popped even more. But I wasn't sure, so I went with the black. I think if I'd done the more graphic look without the purple, it would have popped a little bit better, but oh well. Next, I'm going to stick everything down just by peeling the backing off. That's the awesome part about going ahead and putting the Xyron adhesive on it before you cut it out. Plus, if you put it on before you cut it out, you don't get the little boogers that sometimes hang on when you put a die cut through. So you can see here that some of the gold actually melted onto the backing paper, but it's fine. You just pull the backing paper off and you don't have any problems. The when you move the backing paper though, sometimes the gold does want to fall off, so you just have to pick that off the adhesive as well. Or try and keep it from going onto the adhesive in the first place. So I'm just picking that off. It doesn't take too long, but I'm gonna line this up with the edge and press it down. Thankfully, you have a little bit of time with this adhesive. Not a lot, but definitely enough to get everything in the right place. Then I felt like it needed a little help in the legibility department. So I added some black lines around the inside of this font for the craft day. And it just, it's not even noticeable. You don't look at it and go, oh, that's what she did. But it just helps whoever's looking at this be able to read it, which if you're going to go ahead and put words, why not have them legible? It did take a time or two in a couple of the corners, but it's simple, easy, and just makes it so much better. That is about the end of this page, so thanks so much for joining me. I will be posting in just a couple days on the next one of this same style. Hopefully that one will turn out a little bit better and I'll have some better ideas for you. But tomorrow I have an awesome one where it's another Saturday at Starbucks and it turns out just as cute as the first one. So stick around and come back tomorrow. I'll see you guys and have a wonderful day. Thanks.